The way that I see it is that to me, chat GPT is no different than what Google was 20 years ago. It was a tool to access information. The thing is that now it's amplified, it's accelerated. Not only can it access information, it can produce a product for our students. What I'd like to see in my classrooms is, is that our students are provided different opportunities to demonstrate mastery. I think we have to start rethinking the archaic approach of, okay, you're in an English class, now your grade is gonna be based on this Herculean 30 page research paper. That's not gonna work anymore. Probably it shouldn't have worked 10 years ago. What we have to do is create opportunities for students to have bite-sized opportunities to demonstrate their understanding, and then you can have a comprehensive project that includes some writing. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday shine online. Now, let's get back to the interview. Hi, I'm Gerald Loden. I'm a superintendent in Southwest Missouri. The district that I serve is Nixa. We currently have almost 7,000 students. We have 10 schools and one high school of over 2,000 students. My name is Jose Miguel Cubes. I'm the superintendent at Delhi Unified, which is a school district located in Merced County in the unincorporated town at Delhi. We have five schools, three elementaries, one high school, one middle school, and we serve approximately 2,200 students. I'm Dr. Fawless Rani, superintendent of Marysville Joint Unified School District, a historic community about 35 miles outside Sacramento. We have 24 schools and about 11,000 students serving TK to adult school. How is your school district approaching AI tools like ChatGPT? This is a great question when you were talking about AI. Our district is approaching it very similarly to the way we did all the free apps after COVID. You have a limited budget. You have certain things that the teachers are always like, can we have more? Can we try new things? Well, with COVID, all the providers are giving you things for free. And we told our teachers, try the things that are out there, play with them, embrace them, shape them, and let's vet with our curriculum team and find out what's the best, what you like, and then we'll have to funnel back down to a handful of items that are really good that we can use district-wide or elementary-wide, secondary-wide. So now we're doing that. We're encouraging the apps that are on your list as far as quality for educators. We're encouraging our teachers to try to use them. We know already that we're going to have teachers this year that are able to uh, prepare a weekly newsletter uh, to be able to respond to emails a lot faster, a lot cleaner, so they can focus more on instruction. And I'm personally excited about, even though some people say, well, they're going to cheat. Well, we've always had cheating. There'll be tools that will detect AI. But the idea that if I'm a teacher and I'm teaching the writing process and writing, now you can have a software tool that can be like a tutor and give feedback and not cheat, but help to shape a paper so a child understands the why behind the corrections they're making or adjustments they're making to the writing. I think there's a lot of potential if we use it for the positive. And we will have to be on guard for the negative too. So as of right now, when it comes to, you know, the way that we're approaching these AI I tools such as ChatGPT, we're taking a really slow approach. It's not something that has been activated or has come to the forefront for us here at Delhi Unified. One thing that we are, we're aware of it, you know, our teachers and educators are aware that it exists. The way that I see it is that to me, ChatGPT is no different than what Google was 20 years ago. It was a tool to access information. The thing is that now it's amplified, it's accelerated. Not only can it access information, it can produce a product for our students. What I'd like to see in my classrooms is, is that our students are premium provided different opportunities to demonstrate mastery. I think we have to start rethinking the archaic approach of, okay, you're in an English class, now your grade is gonna be based on this Herculean 30 page research paper. That's not going to work anymore. Probably it shouldn't have worked 10 years ago. What we have to do is create opportunities for students to have bite-sized opportunities to demonstrate their understanding. And then you can have a comprehensive project that includes some writing. So that if a student does have access to chat GPT, if you're telling the student, well, write an essay, they're going to get someone to write an essay for them. But the fact is, the kids were doing it before ChatGPT. Kids could get a friend to write an essay for them. They could go to the World Wide Web, cut and paste. So for us, the approach that I want to take with our district is ensuring that the experiences that our students have in the classroom to demonstrate mastery are genuine and not dependent on technology. They should be dependent more on them applying the learning in a way that is more of an on-demand assessment, so to speak.
Well, I'm ashamed to say it, but we've completely blocked it at this point in time. And the reason we blocked it is we don't know enough ourselves and our teachers do not know enough to know if the work that is coming in is the students learning or if it's something that Chad GPT has responded for them. So at this point in time, we blocked it. We're still waiting for more directions and more understanding of how can we use this resource in a positive way. Are there any positive use cases that you've heard of from students or even teachers around AI tools like ChatGPT? Last year, we didn't have a lot uh, internally, though, when we were using it with our curriculum team. And you're looking at the ability to prepare a presentation or uh, the ability to respond to emails or write a newsletter. When we were giving examples to our curriculum team and also shared with our principals the different ways you could use ChatGPT or like ChatGPT Writer, some of the plugins for Chrome. Every time the people, when we were showing them the examples, they were like, wait, copy that for me, send it to me. And I, how did you do that? So there's a lot of excitement and we have one instructional facilitator. Her whole job is about instruction. And this year she's going to be doing a lot of training on just some simple ways that we could do a better job with basic paperwork and process. Well, I, I will tell you that with Chad GPT, one of the positives I've heard is teachers who are writing the letters of recommendation are beginning to put their thoughts together and then the Chad GPT is making a fantastic individualized letter each time. And I think that's the catch with Chad GPT is all the answers are so different that you can't even put them through turnitin.com to catch where there's a plagiarized response, right? Um, it is being useful and, and I'm sure adults are using it in a positive way, but we're not using it in the schools for our children. With regards to AI tools like ChatGPT and others, are you changing any of your techniques for grading students or maybe even the types of assignments being used in the classroom? We know this is going to be the year, the epic year probably with the students using ChatGPT. We already have pushed out some of the tools that are out there for teachers to potentially use to detect if someone has produced a paper in ChatGPT. Uh, there'll be lots of conversations about reinforcing academic integrity, you know, being honest, not manipulating, not using ChatGPT. But we know this is going to be probably this year and next year be a challenge, years that are the biggest challenges because the tools haven't been developed totally like turning in has been a real favor where there's not really a true turning in, even though there's chat GPT zero. We're revisiting grading in general, just to make sure that a grade is based on a student's progression through mastery. We have not developed any policies or any sort of analysis at this point of how AI is impacting, you know, the productivity of students. Once again, I feel that, that if a grade is based on these varied experiences for students to apply they're learning. It, to me, AI tools is just one component of it. It wouldn't take over what has to be done. So it's not something, it's not a bridge that we've crossed, so to speak. But I do feel that, you know, as we begin, the, as we continue through this year, uh, the first step for us is looking at policy. What is the policies that we can put in place? One of the big areas of student learning that I've always pushed is project-based learning, right? Students who are able to express their learning through projects. And that would be a phenomenal use of chat GPT when they can go and do their research, find some examples of good projects, and then come to the class and do their project in front of the teacher with their groups and show their learning. I just don't think we are there yet. And that's the issue is it's hit school districts so hard and so fast that we just haven't managed on how to link the positives of chat GPT with what we're doing in our schools right now. So It'll come. I know our technology committee is still already working on it. I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with. Thanks for listening to our smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This was our district talk segment where we interview school district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday launch into their future by shining online. This episode was brought to you by our smartsocial.com VIP program. It's called the Very Informed Parent Program, which helps you engage your students with teen-led video lessons. Stay one step ahead with our premium parent newsletter and discover hidden features on trending apps on teens' phones and our 54-plus live parent and student-friendly events every single year. You can click on the link below to chat with one of our team members if you want a free pass to our VIP program to support your community with our smartsocial.com resources. And if you're a district leader who has a success story, we would love to feature you on a future episode. You can click the links below to reach out. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. 
Have a great day.